Many of you asked me what it would look like if you did acrylic, or could you do acrylic with the Aurora, that glass snail? We are going to have a battle between the gel and the acrylic Aurora nails. What does it look like? Which one is better? Do they both look good? Let's get started. Thanks to those who do leave comments. And that was a great comment, actually. Can you use acrylic? My natural instinct was to use gel because it is the clearest and I thought it would refract the most. And I may be right, I don't know. Let's try the acrylic and see what it looks like. But this time I'm gonna try, I've got my nails already prepared and I've got a gel top coat on here. I'm just gonna use the unicorn chrome this time because my friend, Anastasia, who kind of did this design, I was taking her lead on it and how you do it. She also said you can do it in the unicorn chrome. So I'm just gonna put it on both of them. You know how chrome sometimes can be a little bit fussy? If you're not getting the perfect chrome that you want, don't worry about it because we're putting some stuff on top. So if, it, if you got a little bump in there or a little granule, don't worry about it. I was gonna nuke it, but we've already done that. So I'm gonna put it away because I don't wanna knock it over. You know, chrome, if it goes on the floor, you're not retrieving that. Okay, notice I have little short nails. Notice that caravan, my I nails are showing. They're as short as you've had in quite a while. They're so cute, I love them. Feel good. Yeah? Yeah, it does. Okay, so what should we do first? The gel or the um, acrylic? What do you think? Well, quickly do the gel. We've, we've done the gel, gel the so let's get video. the gel out of the way. Good idea, cameraman. We'll do the, oh, these are much shorter. I'm going to go for longer, but we don't want it. Okay, so get yourself that foil. And um, I have this one. It's kind of a yellowy, pinkish tinge, but usually the kind of the gold, bluey tones really come out of it. So I'm just going to leave it like that. So I'm just going to measure. We'll do the index, the gel, and the bigger finger, the acrylic. How's that? And you can see that that's way too big. These fingers are little. So I'm just going to cut it. Now the trick with it, if you didn't see the first video that I did with the gel, um, make sure you cut the foil a little bit smaller than your actual finger. Now there's two ways for this to look and you can be very particular about what you're going to do. You can crinkle it up so it has more of a crinkle look. I particularly like it because it refracts the color more, refracts the light, and it makes you see the effect more. But if you don't crinkle it very much, then you will leave more of a flat look. I also tend to think when you see it, it kind of, because it bends a little bit the way nails don't naturally bend. So sometimes it can look like the structure might be off. So the crinkle kind of helps that. So I'm just trying to cut that down. You can see it's too long. And you don't have to be like perfect size to your finger simply because it's not, it doesn't have to be that accurate. Hard to cut with little scissors with a shiny surface. Okay, so that's, you can just see that that's that little guy that I'm just gonna stick on there. I'm gonna put it right there. Nobody sneeze. Okay, so I'm gonna get a gel brush and I'm just gonna get some builder gel. And I'm just gonna put it right on top of the chrome. Now I've gotten the dust off of the chrome there, but I'm just gonna paint it right on top of the chrome. Now, because chrome, you know, when it was first designed, it was meant as a finishing thing. So now that we're putting it in between, you know, it wasn't really designed for that. So there is a possibility you could suffer some service breakdown because it wasn't designed for that. Because we're building now a builder gel on top of it, right? So just heads up, okay? So this is where the crinkle effect comes in. If you lay it down, my nails tend to be a bit curvy. So when you're laying a flat piece in, uh, it can kind of wrinkle inside, which is what I like. But we'll try to make it a little bit more flatter just for something a little different, but it just might not work out that way just because of the way my nails are. So it looks okay, but it, it, it doesn't really look like too much. Wait to get the gel on top if you don't already know that. It's so cool. So I'm gonna nuke it in between so I can cure that foil in between there. Okay, because I already have a video on the gel I did, I think it was one really long nail and the, all the other nails were done. We're not gonna spend too much time on this. So I'm just gonna build on the builder gel. If you want that in detail, do check that video out. Caraman, can you put a card or some Will technical do. thing? Yep, there'll be a card yeah. at the top and I'll put a link in the description too. Okay. So we'll buzz through this.
Okay, so I'm just gonna cut out for the next finger that we're gonna put under the acrylic nail. I'm gonna have to think smaller than it actually is. You know, you always think it's bigger than it is, right? Yeah, I made it way bigger. So just size it up to it. And the idea is just remember to keep it shorter and smaller on the sides than your actual finger. You don't want to exceed it or even try to match the sides of it. You want to go smaller than it. Okay, let's see if that guy will stick. Okay, now I do need to have something sticky there. So I'm gonna put a little bit of acrylic down. And those of you who are waiting, my brush and file sets are back in. Heads up, a beautiful new design on the brush. And a cheaper price too. Oh, I forgot to have myself a little, I always like a little catch-all paper towel. So I'm just gonna put a tiny bead of acrylic because I just want to put it on here. Just enough surface tension to help that little foil stick. Pick it up, stick it on. And now because acrylic is curing as you put it on, like with the air, you want to be able to stick it on there. Needs a little more to grab onto, I think. seems to be a little bit more flatter. That's one thing I'm noticing. A little acrylic on top, I don't think I want that. And that makes sense because gel, as sticky as it is, there's a dog next door if anybody can hear that. Gel, as sticky as it is, it doesn't actually stick the foil down like you think it might because it's not cured yet either, but if it's cured, it wouldn't stick anyway. But acrylic it sticks more to the acrylic so therefore it's laying a little bit flatter it's also a bigger finger so maybe that's why it's a little more flat huh okay we just might get that one to be a little bit more flatter okay now i'm just going to put some acrylic on top very curious to see if this is going to look as clear now one way to make your acrylic not look very clear is to add too much monomer make sure when you're doing your acrylic that you are not doing a bead with too much monomer. Just make sure that you don't use too much monomer because it doesn't matter what product you're using. If you use too much monomer, you take a chance of making it a little cloudy or a little bit off-colored or discolored. So you just want to make sure you use the right liquid to powder ratio when you're using any acrylic. Okay. Oh, it's it's picking up the light very differently now don't be alarmed when you're working with acrylic you know when you're doing inlays with glitter and whatnot it can look very cloudy I've done clients where I'll they'll pick the color that they want the glitter and you do all their nails and then they sit back and look at their nails and like mm, this isn't the color it didn't have quite as much sparkle as was as I was hoping that's because acrylic dries kind of cloudy but no worries once you file that up and once you buff it and top coat it beautiful so that's what's happening here it's got that kind of cloudy look so if you're not familiar with acrylic your first reaction can be well that looks awful and when you compare the two look at that the gel is sparkling like crazy and the acrylic is very very dull very very cloudy but don't be alarmed that is simply the curing process of the acrylic I'm just adding a little bit more make sure that I have good structure in there but also making sure that little piece of foil is completely covered. Now for anybody who would like to know, we're gonna let these cure and then I'm gonna file them up, but anybody would like to know what's on my other hand. I did these nails today for this video on my other hand and I thought it was gorgeous. It's just beautiful. And I'm sure people might wanna know what I've used. They often ask that question and sometimes they forget. I have used a light elegance product called their P Plus Soak Off Gels. And the colors I'm using is the base is two straws, one shake. That's cute. 
and Tiny Diamond, which is the top coat being the diamonds. Just FYI. Okay, put my little, oh, and if anybody is interested, yes, I have these for sale now, nailcareer.com. Aren't they adorable? I love them. It's my new dish. Okay, see the difference? Don't give up on it yet. I'm going to file them up, and then we'll compare the difference with the top coat. Okay, get yourself a good file, and I'll just go ahead and file these up. Okay, so I'm just dusting them off. I filed them up the same, and you can see they're both cloudy as equally, <laughs> or it's equally as cloudy. That's okay. surprising. It is, actually. But, well, I mean, when you buff something like yeah. that, it's going to be a bit dusty. But we're going to put the top coat on and see the difference. Like I say, my gut feeling is you should go gel on this, but I am curious. Now, this is the acrylic. Now, keeping in mind, we are top coating it with a gel. But it's not a builder coat. It's just to shine it up, just like we would top coat any nail. We usually do it with a gel. It's very common to top coat them with gel. Well, you know, it actually looks pretty good. It's actually, you can see in the video, it's sparkling up pretty good. It's nice. Let's see how it compares with the gel. Now, keep in mind, we built it with the gel, so it has more surface area to refract through. It does in the acrylic as well, but I think it refracts better in the gel. Oh, no, I'm not sure what happened here. Let's look back in the video. Maybe we can find the problem. Yep, look at that. I laid the foil down. I pressed, causing the gel to spread, but not fully to the edge, creating this bubble illusion. Good to know. Press the foil down completely before curing. But I still think the gel is a little bit clearer. That's why I originally did it with the gel. Just for this particular design, because of the light refracting with the different angles of the foil kind of shining through the product. And I think the gel exaggerates those light refraction a little bit more. Hmm. What do you think, Gary, Matt? Oh, it's super cute. On the original ones that you did, the long ones, I didn't seem to notice the seam of where the cellophane started and stopped. Well, maybe because I did do it a little shyer of it, or maybe because we have a shorter, when you do shorter nails, um, you have a smaller space to get it right. Whereas when you have longer, you have a lot more surface area to look at and much more light is refracting. So we have a smaller area to look at. So you're more hyper-focused to the one area. Yeah, that, so maybe we notice it more. It's just like a short haircut. I mean, I cut my own hair. Of course I do right now. I'm not going to hairdresser. But if this was a short pixie cute cut or whatever shortcut is, then you would notice more mistakes because it has to be more accurate. But a long cut, you can get away with it. Nails are much the same. We can get away with a lot more when it's longer. So that could be why. But that's a very good observation, right? Okay, well, let's take a look at the reveal shot so we can get a little bit of a closer look, maybe in a bigger picture, and you can decide for yourself which one you think is better, acrylic or the gel. Well, I am loving the cute nails, I must say but it's revived my passion for chrome again. Not that I ever lost it, but it's fun to play with the chrome. And I've had many video opportunities where I got a chance to do that. Check out these chrome ones. 